Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars. And in this video, I didn't want to talk about a specific product. Um, I just wanted to talk about binoculars in general. Uh, the specs, the features, how to choose a binocular, uh, what's right for you, what might be wrong for you. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, an assortment from very small to very large and kind of show you what's what with binoculars. So let's, let's get started. So the first thing everybody asks about are the numbers on the binocular. The, the two primary numbers are the magnification and the um, aperture of the binocular. So let me just grab, let's say, this one here. This is a 10 by 50. So what does that mean? There's 10, a little x, and then 50. The first number before the x, that's the magnification. So your eye is one power. That means a 10 by 50 magnifies everything 10 times, or makes it look 10 times closer or 10 times bigger, however you want to think about it. Um, Handheld binoculars usually range from about 8 to 10 power. They're all pretty close in that range. But I've got a, an assortment here that goes from 8 at the smallest up to 20 at the biggest here. So you, you find binoculars in a, in a wide range of magnifications. The second number behind the X is the um, millimeter size of the objective. So in this case, this is a 50 millimeter binocular. That means this is 50 millimeters across, about 2 inches. The bigger that uh, lens is, the more light it sucks in. Um, a bigger lens just collects more light and shows you more things in dimmer conditions. So big binoculars like these are great for lower light conditions, um, after dark, uh, for astronomy, say. Uh, the small compact ones are great for hiking around during the day when there's already a lot of light to work with, or going to the theater or the ball game where the, the stage is lit up. Um, by definition, if the lens is bigger, like a 50 or a, here's an 80 millimeter, the binocular is going to get bigger, so that means it's going to be heavier as well. So that's one of the first things you got to figure out is how much do I want to carry around with me? Um, and then what type of environment am I going to be using the binoculars in? Uh, the compact ones, eight, this is an 8x32. Compacts can go down as small as uh, like 20 millimeter, really tiny ones. But from 8x20 to maybe 8x32, that's considered compact. And they're great for hiking around, like I said. They don't weigh down your neck very much. Uh, the mid-range ones may be up to about 42 millimeters. That's sort of a general purpose all-around binocular. It works well for pretty much everything. And then full-size binoculars maybe start at 50 millimeters. And then giant binoculars, that's usually 70, 80 millimeters or bigger. We have binoculars up to 100 millimeter. At that point, they become binocular telescopes. They're basically like two telescopes mounted side by side. So definitely quite a range from compact up to giant. One thing I want to mention about the, the numbers, the magnification when you're choosing them, um, anything up to about 10 power, you can hold steady. Um, unless you're like me, you drink a lot of caffeine, uh, even 10 power can get a little bit jittery because you're magnifying everything, the view out there, and the tremor in your hand too. So if you want to hand hold them, 10 power or maybe a little less would be ideal. If you get a 20 power binocular like these guys, there's no way you're going to be able to hold these steady and see the detail out there. So anything above about a 10 by 50, you really want to put them on a tripod uh, for the best, uh, the, the best viewing experience. Next is the field of view. Now, you can't really tell the field of view number by those, those two numbers that I mentioned, like 8 by 42. I don't know what the field of view is. You've got to look somewhere else on the binocular for that because you can have two uh, binoculars with the same uh, magnification and aperture, and they'll have different fields of view. That's because the field of view is based on the design of the eyepiece up top. So uh, here, for instance, this is an 8x42, and on the side here it says the field of view is 8.2 degree field of view. So that's the, the, the slice of the pie. It's an angular field. If shoulder to shoulder, that's 180 degrees, I'm seeing an 8.2 degree slice of view out there. You get up to a 10 by 50 and it shrinks a little bit. This is 6.5 degree field of view. Um, that's another misconception I, I hear a lot of. They, they think the bigger, a lot of people think the bigger the aperture, the more field of view you've got. It really has nothing to do with the aperture. It's, it's how much magnification. Because as the power goes up, just by definition, you're zooming into a smaller field of view and seeing finer detail in that one area, but your field of view is, is shrinking. So if you want a wide field of view, think a lower magnification binocular. So the 8 power uh, would be good for a wide field of view. 10 or higher magnification, like this 10 power, is 6.5 degrees. So it's, it's narrower than the uh, 8.2 degree field. And then you get up to this 20 power binocular, and you're at 4 degrees or less uh, because you're just zooming in on one specific object way out there. So again, you have to decide how much power do I want and how much field of view do I want. What, what are the objects out there that I'm looking at and what would work best for it? Another big spec on the binoculars is the coatings. Um, so all of these 
uh, binoculars, they've got lenses, they've got prisms. The light has to go through multiple pieces of glass to get to your eyeball. And every time light goes through a lens, some of it's reflected back. Like, I don't know if you can see some of the window here, but, but you can see your reflection in the window. That means you're losing some light being transmitted through it. And since there's so many pieces of glass in these, you can lose a couple percent of light with an uncoated um, lens system. So pretty much all binoculars are coated to some degree. Um, there's basic coatings, there's multi-coatings. The, the industry kind of standard for uh, telling you what's best is how many layers of coatings you've got, of anti-reflective coatings. So most of these binoculars that I pulled out here are fully multi-coated. That means each lens is coated multiple times with an anti-reflection coating. So by the time the light gets through it, even though it's going through multiple pieces of, of glass surfaces, you only lose a percent, maybe not even that, of light um, all the way through. So a good uh, fully multi-coated um, lens system will lose very little light going from the outside to your eyeball. The next thing I want to look for is the eye relief uh, spec on the binocular. An eye relief, just grab these 842s, Eye relief is the vertical distance up from the lens to where your eyeball is supposed to sit in order to see the whole field of view. And each binocular is a little different. Some with low eye relief means your eye has to get very close to the lens to see the whole field. And something with a long eye relief like this one, your eye sits up. Uh, I forget exactly what the spec is on this. I'm going to cheat here and look up here. Um, it's 22 millimeter of eye relief. So your eye sits almost an inch above the lens in order to see the whole field of view. So why is that important? Um, if you wear glasses, you're pretty much restricted from getting close enough to the, to the lens because your glasses will sit there and your eye will sit somewhere behind it, right? So if you're using glasses with a very low um, eye relief binocular, you'll be behind the eye relief and that 8.2 degree field of view, you won't see it all. You might only see six degrees of the field or four degrees of the field. So you're losing the edges with a, a low eye relief binocular while wearing glasses. So anything above, I'd say 13 to 15 millimeters, that's considered longer eye relief. 13 to 15 is maybe average. Um, 22 millimeters is very long. So this would work with uh, glasses, no problem. So I would say definitely if somebody in the family that's gonna be using them is wearing glasses, look for something probably 13 to 15 millimeters or even more uh, for the best view. And then uh, on this one, it just rotates down. So when you're using your glasses, you rotate the eye cups down, so your glasses sit close and your eye sits at the right distance. And if you're not wearing glasses, you rotate them up, and that just helps put your eye at that right, at that correct 22 millimeter spacing. These happen to have a rotating up and down um, eye guard. Some of the binoculars here have a fold down. This is more maybe old school. They both work well. You just fold this down, and then those you rotate up and down to find the right eye relief. The next uh, spec that I want to talk about is the, the design of the binocular. It's either going to be a roof prism, the straight through design like this, or a poro prism, which is this uh, shape where the eyes, the eyepieces are narrower, uh, they're closer in, and then there's a couple of prisms in there, and the lenses are further apart. There's prisms in both of them, really, but I mean, you can really tell that there's, the light goes across some uh, right angles here to get down to it. This is the poro prism, and this is the roof prism. Roof prisms in general are more compact. Uh, let me get two that are the exact same uh, spec. So here's, a, here's an 8x42 roof prism, and here's an 8x42 poro prism. So they're more compact. Your hands sit closer together with this design. Here they sit a little bit further apart. Um, por, uh, roof prisms are usually taller, and poro prisms are usually a little bit squatter and wider. What's the difference between them? Well, it really just comes down to personal preference. Most birding binoculars, I'd say, out there are going to be the roof prism ones because usually birders enjoy something that's a little bit more compact and just smaller with their pack, whatever else they're hiking around with. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, extra gear or heavier binoculars uh, resting around on your neck. Um, it's also easier to make a roof prism waterproof because when you, when you focus a roof prism, you're actually focusing some internal lenses. It's all, it's all built inside. With a poro prism, in general, to focus, you turn the knob and the eyepieces actually move up and down against the um, lens down on the bottom. So there's more external moving parts, meaning it's a little bit harder to make it waterproof. A poro prism like this one is definitely water resistant. So if you're in a dewy conditions or foggy conditions, you'll be fine. But if it's actually raining, if there's raindrops coming down, you don't want something that's not waterproof. So stay away from this design or keep it under an umbrella. Uh, but better yet, a waterproof 
uh, roof prism binocular would be ideal for that situation. ED stands for extra low dispersion glass. So your average binocular may not have that, but if you spend a little bit more money, you can get something with ED glass, like this, uh, this is our Savannah Pro. It has ED lenses and the UltraView does not. Well, the, the Savannah is more expensive because of that, but what the ED glass gives you is a little bit better color correction. So whenever light comes through a binocular, um, through a lens or a prism, like uh, uh, I think they discovered you know, hundreds of years ago, you, it breaks it apart into its constituent colors, red, green, blue. Um, the ideal binocular brings all of that light back to focus at one exact focus point, and you get a, an exact reproduction of what you see out there, only magnified closer up. Well, it's not so easy. With, with the lenses and the prisms in there, sometimes you don't get perfect uh, focus from the red to the green to the blue end of the spectrum. So without ED glass, if you're looking at, let's say some, I'm looking across the street there and there's a gas station with some white lettering against a black background, um, especially at higher magnifications, if you're looking at that uh, lettering out there, you might see a slight amount of false color or chromatic aberration. Um, you might see bluish or purplish halo around the edges of the white letters. It's pretty subtle, but it's there, and that's basically some of the light on either end of the spectrum a little bit out of focus. The ED lenses, like the um, Savannah here, uh, tend to minimize that or get rid of it completely. So all the light comes back to focus at the same point, and you have no false color. In most cases, that really doesn't matter. If you're looking, if you're at the ball game, you're just watching the the, the team out there play. You're not going to care. You're not even going to notice it. But if you're birding and you're trying to look for an exact color on the feather of the bird or get an exact reproduction of the, the colors out there, you want to have as little chromatic aberration as possible. So in that case, look for a binocular that has ED glass. All right, so those are the main features and specs. So I just wanted to go through four choices that I picked here and kind of tell you why you might get those uh, binoculars. So first off is a compact one. This is, like I said, great for hiking around. It's an 8x32. Um, you might even want something smaller, 8x20. These would be just for the brighter daylight conditions. They're not going to do so well after sunset in the twilight or for astronomy even, just because they're not sucking in a lot of light. But you don't get those for that reason. You get these because they're very lightweight, dangling on your neck, and they don't bog you down as you're hiking for miles and miles every day. So a compact binocular like this, awesome for daytime and nature walks and hiking, things like that or uh, going to the ball game or the theater when you, know, you don't want to carry too much more with you. An 8 or a 10 by 42 is just about perfect for pretty much most all conditions. It's, it's right in the middle there, so it sucks in more light than the compact one, so it works better in twilight conditions. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but not that much heavier than the compact, so still comfortable around the neck. You can hold these without needing a tripod. So 8x42, I think that's kind of the bread and butter binocular for birders uh, or maybe hikers in general, just if they want to use it in dimmer conditions as well. It, it does, like I said, everything pretty darn well. If you're using it for astronomy, there's definitely more you can see with this than you can with your naked eye. But ideally, you probably want to go one step up for astronomy uh, just to suck in even more light and see more stars or brighter stars. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about um, the... Uh, birding binoculars is you probably don't want to go above about a 10 power. Uh, not only was it harder to hold steady, uh, like I mentioned before, anything over 10 power, it, it really needs a tripod. But as the power goes up, the light level does drop. So at the same aperture, 42 millimeters, if you were to get like a 12 by 42, say, that would be much dimmer than an 8 by 42. So stick with 8 or 10 uh, in that medium range. In the uh, large full-size binocular range, 10 by 50 is probably the ideal. Uh, for handheld astronomy, this is perfect. You can see star clusters. Uh, the Pleiades star cluster looks very nice. Uh, Andromeda Galaxy, you'd see an oval structure with a binocular like this, Orion Nebula. Definitely the, the best, I think, of the handheld astronomy binoculars would be a 10 by 50. And then it works great for daytime, too, as long as you don't mind a little bit extra bulk. It's, it's definitely bigger than the 8 by 42. Um, but you know, if you're okay hiking around with this thing, you get a little bit extra magnification compared to the smaller ones, 10 versus 8. Um, and then after dark in the twilight, it sucks in more light. So 10 by 50, good for handheld astronomy and maybe a little bit more magnification during the day. And then lastly, we get up to the giant sizes. This is uh, our 20 by 80 uh, Giant View ED. So this has that ED glass, very good color correction, great for uh, brighter stars. If you're uh, looking at the Pleiades, which is a, uh, a group of, uh, well, hundreds of stars, but seven, the seven sisters, there's seven bright stars. 
Uh, with a binocular that doesn't have ED glass, you can get some color fringing off of some of those bright stars. This would reproduce the color very well. Uh, it also works great in the house with the room with a view. If you stick this on a tripod and you just have a nice view of the bay, the boats, the mountains, whatever, um, this can stay up on the tripod and guests can come over and get a great view out the window. At 20 power, it's really magnifying a lot. So you're zooming in on very distant things. Uh, the downside being that the field of view is narrower. So you're, you're focusing on one small thing out there versus the big field of view. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention about the giant binoculars um, is the tripod adaptability. Most big ones, I think all of ours, uh, come with a way of attaching uh, the binocular onto a tripod because you really can't use this without a tripod. So that's what this pier is here. Um, it's got a standard quarter 20 thread on the bottom. So any standard photo tripod will work with this, provided the photo tripod is sturdy enough to hold the four pounds, however much this weighs. This is a pier system. A lot of the other big ones will come with a little L bracket that bolts in here and allows you to also put it on a uh, standard photo tripod. The smaller ones usually don't come with it, but most all of them are adaptable so you can put them on a tripod. Like I said, an 8x42 or a 1050, you probably don't need a tripod, but sometimes you'll want to use it hands-free. And so if you unscrew the front cap, below the focuser knob right here on 90, probably 95 or more percent of all binoculars out there, you'll find a standard quarter 20 threaded hole. That's the tripod socket, but it's going the wrong direction. It's facing out this way and the tripod goes up this way, right? So there's a um, optional accessory you can get for any of our binoculars uh, called a binocular tripod adapter, or L bracket sometimes. Um, it attaches here and it comes down with a standard quarter 20 threaded hole designed to fit onto any photo tripod. So even the small ones, you can get an attachment to uh, put it onto a tripod. The last thing I wanted to mention is something that I've, I've heard a lot from customers, um, and I just wanted to kind of dispel this in case you were wondering. So I hear many times saying, oh, well, that binocular is better because it's higher power. Um, and well, that's not as good because it's lower power. Well, it's not really black and white like that. High power is good if you want to look at one thing very far out there and get it as close as possible. But you don't want to always just shop for the highest magnification you can because then you're, like I said, killing the field of view. Your field of view is narrower and you also just can't hold it steady, right? So if you, if you want to handhold it, don't go above probably about a 10 power. Um, and a lot of times you'll find binoculars out there, just be careful of some of the marketing sometimes. You see 50 to 100 power binoculars of this size. Uh, I saw an ad for a 100 by 80 millimeter binocular, 100 power, 80 millimeter lens. So it was this uh, size, but with 100 power instead of 20 power. I do not recommend going above about 20 to 25 power on binoculars of this size. Uh, the reason being, there's two reasons. Um, as I mentioned before, as the power goes up, the light level goes down. So if you want to get more than 20 or 25 power, you really want a bigger lens to support that magnification and get a decently bright image. 100 by 80 millimeter binocular will be very dim and you won't see very much with it. And the other problem is if you go super high on the, on the power of a binocular, the two lenses here have to be pointed at exactly the same thing. Um, and if they're not, you start seeing double view, like a double vision. It's called collimation. The binoculars have to be collimated so you don't go cross-eyed and get a headache. Up to 20 or 25 power, that's pretty easy to do. They can adjust these things so they're well aligned. But at 100 to 150 power, it is almost impossible to get the thing perfectly aligned. So you're always seeing a double image with those super high binoculars. And if you're not, pretty quickly you probably will if you bump them around a bit. They won't stay perfectly aligned for long. So just be reasonable with your magnifications. Don't over magnify. Eight to 10 power with a handheld, maybe up to 20 to 25 power with the giant binoculars. All right, so there you have it. That's a good overview from compact to full size to giant binoculars. Uh, hopefully that will help you uh, make a decision based on what you want to view, whether it be daytime viewing, hiking, or astronomy. Uh, we've got plenty to choose from. And with, the, with that information, I think you can probably make the right choice for your needs. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.